Hello and welcome to this tutorial where I will show you how you connect to a MySQL database using Entity Framework in .NET 6 application. The steps we need to follow is to create a new project and I will just create a new simple web app for that. Then we need to install all the correct NuGet packages. Then we will create a models folder containing two files called app.dp.context and a file called book. And at last, we will migrate the changes to the database to create a book table and it will automatically generate a migration history table. And then we will watch if the migration was going well by looking at the database in PHP MyAdmin, which is my tool from my hosting provider to look inside my MySQL database. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is to create a new project. So inside Visual Studio 2022, I will say create a new project. And inside here, I will just take a normal ASP.NET Core web app and hit next. And then we will call it connect to my SQL database and just hit next and inside this window we want to use the framework.net 6 so we will just hit create and now when the project is created we want to go to the connect to mysql database and right click and we will say manage nuget packages and now as you can see we have no packages installed so we will go to browse and we need to install four packages so let's start to install the Entity Framework Core from Microsoft. So we will go to this search bar and we will type Entity Framework. And it will just take a little time. And then the NuGet package we want to install is this Microsoft Entity Framework Core. And we don't want the newest version because it will not work with the MySQL packages from Oracle. So what we will do is to install the newest 5 version. So in this case it's 5.0.17. And then we hit install. Then we will have to say OK and I accept and let it install. So the next NuGet packet we want to install is actually this one, Microsoft Entity Framework call tools and what this package allows us to do is to actually migrate our solution to the mysql database and again we want to use the newest version of the 5 version and let's hit install and again hit ok and i accept so now that we have entity framework installed we need to have some new good packages from oracle who is the owner of mysql so now we will make a new search and we will type mysql and the package we want to use here is the mysql entity framework core by oracle and we don't want this one mysql.data.entity framework core because this is deprecated and you can also read here this package version is deprecated use mysql.entity framework core instead and it's actually this one. So we will click it and then let's install again the newest 5 version and hit install. Then hit OK and I accept. So now the last package we want is actually this one mysql.data. So let's click on that one and actually we can install the newest version here uh, 8.0.29. That will work just fine. I don't know if in the future there will come a version 9, if that works. So maybe if, if there already is a version 9, then go and choose the newest version of the, the 8 version. Then you are sure that this will work. So let's hit install and click OK. And I accept. So now that all the NuGet packets is installed, let's go and right click the project and we will make a new folder called models or just model actually and inside this model folder 
we want to add a new item and it should be a class and we want to call it app db context and just hit add and inside this file we want to extend this class with the db context class and to do that we need to to say we will use the microsoft dot entity framework call so now our class will inherit from the db context class so inside our class we want to add a property and it should be the type of a db set and then it will be a book but we have not made the book model yet but we will do that later on and then we will call this book and what this property will do is that it will actually create the table called book and when we make the model called book we will give it an id and a name and these properties in the book model will actually be our columns in the table but before we make the book model we will actually make the connection to the database so to do that we will make a new method and it will be a protected method and we will override an already existing method and we will say void and on configuration and this will have a parameter called bd context options builder and let's just call this option builder and this is actually not on configuration it is on configuring like this so now we want to say to the to the option builder that we want to use mysql and the parameter in here will actually be our connection string so we will say server equals to something and we will say database equals to something and then a user id and that should also be something and at last we have the password so this value will depend on your own credentials to log into your server and it's your server name your name of the database and your login in this video i will type my credentials but you will not be able to see it but then we can test it in a php my admin but for now let's make the book model so let's right click and say add and again new item and it should be a class called book and we say add and inside here we want to make two properties so we say prop and hit tab twice and this should be an int so that's okay and the next will be an id and then i will make a new property and this will be a string and it's called name so these properties will actually be the columns in the table and just to show you that you can do something more in here we can use what's called data annotations and the way we use it is that we can say key and if you just hover over this and say show potential fixes or you can hit alt enter on your keyboard it will suggest that we should use system component model data annotation so what this will do is that it will say to the database that the id is our key which means it's our primary key and then again we have another data annotation and it's called required and what this will do is just to restrict the user from putting in a record in the database uh, without a name so when you put required you have to have the value or else the mysql's database will refuse it but the next thing is that i will show you my php my admin 
I have it right here. It says uh, that I have no tables in the database. And I have a database called setbit API underscore tick underscore db. So in the connection string, I can actually copy and paste this and go to the app db context and say that my database is setbit api underscore tick underscore db. And now I will fill this out and you cannot see it, but then we can test the migration. So now I fill out my credentials and the next thing we will do is go to this package manager console. And inside here, we want to write add and a dash and then migration. And then we will give it a name. So let's just call this my first migration and hit enter. So as you can see, it was built successfully and it generates this migration file where it tells when we migrate, it's called up, we will create a new table called book and it have these columns. So it will make the changes for us. And if we undo the migration, it will use this down method and the opposite of creating a table will be to drop it. But now when the migration is created, we can go to the console again and we can say update dash database and hit enter. And as you can see, it again said build successfully. And if we go back to the database and update, we will get these new tables. So if we look at the book table that we created, we can see that it has a column called ID and a column called name. So that it is actually all you need to know about how to set up the MySQL in Entity Framework for .NET 6. Of course, you can get more advanced with this, but for now, it will give you a good idea how Entity Frameworks connect with the MySQL database. And if you want to, inside the AppDB context file, you can just add more properties and that will just add additional uh, tables to your database. But thank you for watching and please remember to like and subscribe and check out my other videos. And if you want to copy and paste this code, I actually have a article down the description that you can just click and it will have all the code that we just wrote. But have a nice day and see you. Bye.